a little woody, 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 the working cocker spaniel. Um, I can't tell you how much of a, a nice surprise it is to have a working cocker spaniel that we're not looking at resource guarding, possession, aggression, aggressive reactivity, biting people, claiming the sofa, guarding the food bowl, etc., etc. So it's lovely to have a working cocker in with us for a little bit of training that doesn't have those issues because they are very, very common within the breed of the working cocker spaniel of late. Woody! So what are we looking at? What Woody does is he doesn't know how to switch off in the house. Constantly wired, constantly stimulated, constantly over threshold. He's up at the window, he's running around the cushions or the sofa, everything completely overstimulated to light, sound, noises, movement, everything. So what we need to do is we need to implement an effective crate training program. Now, a dog that is effectively crate trained is not a dog that lives in a crate. That is cruel. That is not what we want. However, an effectively crate trained dog is one that sees the benefit of being in a crate. Okay, so this isn't about how we do that. This is more about the two reasons why we utilize the crate as a temporary tool to help train our dogs. So the first reason is we want to use that crate to manage his energy levels. Okay, so every single time, and I teach every single time that his pulse is raised, we need to put him into that crate for about 20 minutes to then come back down from that excitable state to then be in a more relaxed, subdued, calm, decompressed state. So everyone's rules are different. Everyone's got different lifestyles. Everyone does different activities or whatever with their dog. So the easiest way that I remember it and I teach to remember it is every single time this little dog's pulse is raised, fetch, play, chase, walk, wrestle, tug of war, whatever, every single time this little dog's pulse is raised, he's going to go into his crate, which we've connected it as a nice positive place to be, into his crate for about 15 to 20 minutes to then decompress so that his energy levels can then be reduced. So first reason, we're using that temporary crate as a tool to manage his energy throughout the day. Second reason is we use it to look at or to monitor his behavior. So first reason is for energy levels. Second reason is for his behavior. And the way that I teach it is every single time any a little dog pushes you to the point of, oh, flipping it, Woody, why have you done that? That is the point where he needs to go into his crate. So we're using, the, the second reason why we're using a crate is to show him exclusion from a social setting is going to be incredibly powerful we're also using it to show him that his behavior at the time is not acceptable so we're putting him in that crate a little bit like a timeout tool or a naughty step which is what as parents you potentially use for your children when they've been cheeky or naughty or whatever we're using it as a timeout tool and a, and a naughty step to hoist it a very very valuable lesson if you continue to do that behavior that we do not want you to do, that is going to get you excluded from the social setting. The social animal who wants to be with us, he loves to be with us and vice versa. We want him to be with us. However, we need to teach him the second that you start displaying that behavior that we do not want you to do, that is going to get you excluded to go to the naughty step to think about your behavior. So we're making it very, very clean cut. If you're calm, you're relaxed, you're polite, you're well-mannered, and you're not wired, then you can stay. Sit on the sofa, watch the extenders with the family, you can stay. The second that you do or display a behavior that anybody in that family does not want or appreciate or want you to do, that's what then gets you onto the naughty step and then puts you into that timeout tool, which is the second reason for a crate. Now, the reason why I say oh Woody why have you done that because your rules are different to mine my rules are different to hers her rules are different to his so the the discipline and the boundary and the structure and the routine for whatever dog you own is going to be completely different to what your neighbors is 
and his and hers and his and hers, etc., etc. So you can't really put uh, a designated behaviour that you dislike. That's going to go into, into the crate. That's a timeout tool. That's a timeout. Go and think about your behaviour, because that may be okay for you. That may be all right for what your family wants and what your family doesn't want. So the easiest way to think about it is without narrowing it down to rules or what's right or what's wrong, as I say, is every single time the dog makes anybody in that family go, oh, flipping it, why have you done that? That's the time that it needs to go into the crate for two or three minutes to calm himself down and think about the behavior that he has just displayed, which was resulting in him being excluded from the family environment. Good lad. So, Two reasons why we use a crate. One, to manage energy levels throughout the day and the night, to teach the benefit of decompression and relaxing and not being so wired and stimulating. Two, second reason, to manage his behavior. Every single time he does a, 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 any form of behavior that we do not want him to do, into the crate, naughty step, think about what behavior he's just done to display to us, to then make him think about what gets his self excluded from the family environment. So, little Woody. Come on in, buddy. Come on in, you. Here he is. Sit. Good. There you go, mate. Well done. No. And we're also looking at jumping up, aren't we? Yeah. So, we'll come on to that. Sit. Sit. Good. Good boy. Next lesson, jumping up. Good boy, well done.